in the carpool. The Damn it! Thing. All right, ladies and gents, welcome to another episode of Carpool Rigmarole, where we talk about absolutely nothing and hope to get paid for it. Today's topic is your question of what's your thoughts when people keep bringing up race, as in like, like I'm held back because of this and that, my past or or my ancestors' past or all that stuff. All right. Like, how do you, how does that make you feel? Are you black? Do you identify as black? I mean, I guess I'm in America. My skin is that color, so. Yeah. I guess well, I'm how does it make you feel? Even if I don't think I'm black, American. <laughs> in America, we're just going by purely skin color. <laughs> That's it, purely. But Everybody in America right, is American. A great question, because I, I have a strong opinion on that. I Please share. Up, I grew up in the dirty South, where racism is probably at its strongest, which is still stupid to this day. Uh, like, I grew up in a tiny town. Nobody dated really outside their race, and if you did, you would looked at kind of like an outcast. And, really? yep, like, even like, it was one, I remember even in like middle school, mm -hmm. it was one white girl that I had a crush on, or I liked, we would talk on the bus every time. Yeah. And I asked her like, would she be my girlfriend? And she just straight up told me like, uh, <laughs> she was like, I would. <laughs> she was like, I would, but my dad don't let me date black guys. Oh, shit, and, that she said that? Yeah, and I, I knew, like, I knew that was a common answer. So I was even, I honestly. Thank you for your time. Thought, yeah, <laughs> I thought that was going to be an answer. I was just like, all right, cool. All right. Well, and that was normal for me as a kid. And then, like, man, like, I don't know, it was weird growing up in Louisiana because even, like, I remember one time I applied to go work at when Dixie, right? You know mm, when Dixie is? Nah, I don't know. When Dixie is like Saint Smith's so out here, like oh, Kroger's, what's or like here, whatever. Baby. So I applied for a job at Win Dixie when I was like 17 or something. Right. And when I asked the dude for the application, it was a black dude. And he was like, hey man, I ain't even gonna lie to you, but we can't hire any black people right now. And I was like, damn, damn they reached their quota. Yeah, look for real. So like, I don't know why, but <laughs> <laughs> growing up in that little town, it feel like I grew up 50 years in the past or something. Mm -hmm. and we still got whooping in school. We still, you know, like, I don't know, man, it was weird. And, uh, but that's how it was. They said that, but also sometimes they wouldn't hire white people. Sometimes they wouldn't hire black people. They had to like keep it even because I'm assuming at one point it was too heavy of one race. Well, at least they kept it even. Yeah. Even in school, they were like, trying. Sometimes they would do that, right? But I got a point to that. We'll come back to it. Yeah, but at the same time, I don't feel like I'm being held back at all at this point. I feel like, especially now that I've joined the military, left home, and I experienced the rest of the world or the rest of the country, and I noticed for sure, like Louisiana is way more racist than any other place I ever lived. Like, ain't no other place gonna look at a interracial couple mm -hmm. and think nothing of it. Like, I mean, my fiance not black, right. so whatever. Yeah, but she's also Puerto Rican. So. Yeah, and I, I'm definitely, I, 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 don't know, I got a strong opinion on it though. In short, I don't think black people are held back at all in 2023, you know? I think we had, we still have setbacks. Like we were, you know, like we were enslaved. Or, and it's even hard for me to say we, cause like my history, I I don't know my like who knows my whole history. Right. I know you know like I don't to me I don't think I would look like a normal African. So I don't think <laughs> what is a normal African? Look? Like they darker skin than me and my. Opinion. Oh, they're like the under like, the bed dark. America. I had no idea I was dark skin to come to America. He said you black. I said of course we are black. He said no, you black as shit. <laughs> One guy told me I look like under the bed. If you look under the bed, it's dark as fuck under the bed. <laughs> yeah, like if I was out there with you know. And just arrived in Africa, I think they're gonna be looking at me like, hey, like, bro. Damn, you need a tan. Yeah. <laughs> like, bro, what's up? what's up with this dude trying to fit in? So I don't think I'm not 100% African. I don't believe in calling myself African American for one thing, because I'm American. American. I ain't never been to Africa. I, I mean, I would love to visit, but I don't feel like that's my home. Uh, you know, like when we were kids, we were told we were more native american than black and then you know but people call us black so we just stay with the label but I, it don't matter to me mm -hmm. i mean we get treated as black in america and to be treated as black really don't matter to me. like because 
I don't feel like I'm held back whatsoever in America in this time, day and age. Like I feel like there's nothing I can't do. Mm. And for people who think they're held back because of their race, I would say honestly say, I know y'all, it's hard for y'all to grasp, but y'all really held back by your own mentality. Mind. Like it's really it's just, mind. if you think you held back, you're gonna be you, held back. Yeah, you are held back. Like I, I remember I read a book once and it said, no matter, like, like take somebody that who will never, uh, who the doctors say will never walk again, right? get in mm. the accident, mm -hmm. you know? And one guy walks again, the other guy doesn't. To me, the true difference is probably the one guy that walked tried to walk. The one guy who didn't walk is just gave up. It's just, I can't walk. He yeah. told me I can't walk, so I can't walk. That's it. Is that think, thinking grew rich? I don't know that. Familiar. But, and, but yeah, but so I think if you think you held back mm -hmm. or if you don't think you held back, you right either way. So if you believe you held back in America being black, mm -hmm. I feel like you're going to be held back because that's what you believe. Like your beliefs are going to become your reality. So what about I mean, the people who say, you know, when they get pulled over being pulled over while black? I mean, you've been pulled over. A bunch I've been of pulled over. With, I ain't gonna say a bunch of times. I probably got pulled over. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm my fault. Yeah. I was just assuming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you assume because yeah, it's, you know, that's how it goes, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I learned mean, something new today. Oh, for one thing, yeah, if y'all don't know, I'm into guns. I probably got 30, 40 guns. And on that foot. Yeah, I have been pulled over with my guns. One time, I was pulled over here. One thing, if y'all don't know, the center line in the middle of the road is yellow, and you cannot cross that in any circumstance. Not yeah, if you're trying you to turn around right or not. That's exactly you know, what you just did. No, right? but that's the that's thing. It's broken right mm -hmm. there. Listen, broken I don't want to get pulled over with you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I was I used to go shooting in this spot, and the quickest way is when you get in close, you cross the median, and you know how they, they kind of have them little areas in the big medians where the highway is split where you can uh yeah it's the suicide lane is that what you're talking about i don't know what it's called it's called the suicide but it's like things where you can cross the median it's made i think it's made for cops and stuff to cross. oh that stuff yeah oh, okay yeah but so i crossed right there to go shooting and a cop pulled up behind me and he stopped me and he told me uh he pulled me over because you can't cross that thing and i told him straight up i was like i didn't know he said yeah you can't cross the yellow one you can cross the white lines on the other side, but not the yellow. And I was like, oh, okay. And then he asked me if I had any weapons in the car. And I told him, I was like, yeah, I got a, a weapon in the car, or a couple. And he said, how many? And I just told him, like, I have no idea, bro. I was like, I got about 10 or, 10 or 15. <laughs> and he asked me where they was at. I was like, man, I got one in the center console, glove compartment, three in the back seat, four in the back of the bed. Like, man, I told him straight up, man. He was like, all right, uh, let me just see your license and registration. But he was cool. He was cool. And I was just like, you sure? You don't want to, uh, or no, I didn't tell, I didn't have one in the glove compartment. I just had one in the uh, center console. Mm. And he was like, let me see it. And I was like, you sure you don't want to get it yourself? And he was like, nah, you good, just go ahead. And I was like, all right. I gave him my license and registration. He just gave me a verbal warning and told me if he caught me doing it again, he'd give me a ticket. And that was it. Now, that was probably, you know, a lot of people will say, well, you got that, you know, because not every cop is the same, obviously. Yeah. Right. So, but would you say you got lucky with a good cop or it was because it was how you conducted yourself while getting pulled over? Yeah, I would say. Or maybe a little bit of both. I would say a little bit of both. I would say I got a regular cop and I conducted myself normal. Mm. You know what I mean? What do you mean by normal? Like, I think. I mean, people who got out of, who's used to being around guns shouldn't be freaked out. Oh, no. Especially if you know your rights. You shouldn't really be freaked out if a cop pulls you over with a gun in the car. Right. But I if mean, you already have that mentality that, you know, all cops are, you know, they're out to kill you. Of course. Again, yeah. like I said, if you, if you believe that, if you your beliefs are going to become your reality. So if mm -hmm. you believe every cop is out there out to get you and you start panicking. Get all fidgety and shit. And you're making shoot. him nervous. Yeah. And the cop feels that energy. Right. Because he don't want to get shot in either. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure most people 
uh, most cops ain't trying to uh, get shot or, or honestly, I don't think most of them are trying to shoot somebody. I think most of the ones that shoot are just scared. Like they have, must have an experience that much in their life. Right. And I think they just get scared. And I mean, I think cops are just like any other job field. Like, I mean, I've been in the military and we had a bunch of idiots in the military and people think, you know, we, we smart with guns in the military when I can no guarantee hell you, no. We weren't like just as many idiots with guns. Like my roommate, man, this dude was protecting the vice president and everything. And I guarantee you this dude wouldn't have took a bullet for nobody. <laughs> when I tell you. Like, Especially they, not now. He would not have taken it, nothing. Like he would be ducking, hiding if somebody started shooting. And he was military and blah, blah, blah. But I, I mean, I just think just like any other career field, it's probably that 10% of people that everybody wish was fired, they still there, they can't get rid of them. And them cops is the ones that you probably see on video all the time. All the time. And idiots and getting scared right. and doing whatever. Um, as far as police, I think we could do way better in police uh, training. Oh, 100%. Like they need to put in dudes. Yeah, do like some CB, more CBTs or something, something you know, on a, on an off day. You have to complete this many hours of, you know. They need to do some real, something. some real stuff. Right. right. And, and then you also got to go through like a mentality thing. Like, bro, yeah. if you're not, if you're the type, you know, that type that's all, that just wants to pop one off all the time, like you should, somebody oh, should yeah. know about that. Oh, yeah. But I think also, I think people know, but. Like, what are you going to say? Is, when they get in those positions, man, like, I don't know if every country like that, but I feel like America is hard. It's hard to prove you fired this person for it. A specific reason when you're working for the government like I think it's kind of hard to get fired mm -hmm. and we know like these people should be let go but they, they just stay and it shouldn't be that way but yeah I don't think like I said man, I, I, I feel like I'm not held back anymore than a white person in America the only thing I think is we you know as a, as people with darker skin in America had a at not, and they're not everybody, obviously, but like if you take like 100 white people, 100 darker skinned people, because you know, everybody that's darker skin would have been treated differently mm -hmm. in the times of slavery. Right. So, I think if you take 100 of each and you follow their, their lineage, you would see that the darker skinned people have, you know, are lower income, lower this, which means, you know, more you know living in those places higher crime rates mm -hmm. and stuff like that so when you're born as a darker skinned person in america and you have a lower chance of starting off in a high income family and stuff like right. that but as far as i mean we're in america you know the land of opportunity and that's legit we're in the land of opportunity and once you get past that certain age where you know you can think for yourself and you can do things for yourself I feel like if you choose to believe you're still held down, then that's your choice. That's your reality. You're going to live that reality. But, like, if y'all think you held down more, like, give me a specific person or something. Oh, like, tell me how are they not held back. Like, if you're, you know, 30 years old and you're in your job, tell me how, and you're you're not white, you know, it's mm -hmm. like you're dark, darker skin. And there's another 30-year-old white person in your career oh your right you're on the field. same level basically like, yeah like tell I've done me this how right. they have more opportunity than you like explain right. in detail how then i might believe it or something i just have to see it i mean i'm sure maybe in some instances there are you know because there are pockets of racism yeah there are in america very small but as a part. whole country i think racism has lost 100 you know what i'm saying it's, it's lost it's there's no way 100. Racism could come back at this point. It'd have to be like we'd have to wipe us out. Yeah, oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying, and to start fresh, basically, for that shit to come back at this point. Uh, yeah, racism is dying. I it's mean, dead. It, it's, it's still not, it's not dead. One hundred percent. Obviously, like, yeah. It's like the moon. There's, you know, there's, there's like it's like a little virus. That you smash, like, oh shit! You know, and that roach still like <laughs> yeah, just did it, wiggling, still trying to come to life, and you step on it again. <laughs> like, yeah, damn. That's exactly what it is right now. And if you were racist and you think like America's still with you, please oh, yeah. come out. One hundred percent gone. <laughs> oh, you lost. Comments, yeah. Right. Please say it right now. Yeah. You got the balls to say that shit. Go ahead. 
Go ahead. 